he gets girls into debt in order to push them into escorting. I give him all the power over me. You cannot say no. He was even controlling my private life. Welcome back to Offbeat. I'm Tommy McDonald. In today's episode, Shona River is going to explain how she was trafficked to America to work in the porn industry and as an escort illegally. It's an important story because this is something that's happened to hundreds, if not thousands of women. And it's something that's happening right now. So please help me out and like this video, subscribe to my channel. We need to make sure lots of people see this video and put pressure on the porn industry to change. Before we get into the interview, I want to give you a bit of background and context. Joan River is a Hungarian former porn star that I've known for years. She told me a long time ago some of the things that happened to her, but it's only now that she's ready to talk about them. Off the top of my head, I could name maybe 15 or 20 women that almost the exact same thing happened to. No one's going to talk about this because most of the victims are worried that if they talk about it, then they'll get banned from entering the US. And that's on top of the fact that when you say something bad about the porn industry and you still want to work in it, it's career suicide. So in the interview, Shona's going to explain that the person that trafficked her is Derek Hay from LA Direct Models. While she was in the US, she worked for LA Direct as well as an escorts agency called The Luxury Companion. Here's a copy of Shona River's signed contract with LA Direct Models. I thought it was important to show you proof that this really happened. You can also see scenes that she shot in America, like the one she did for Blacked. And I've included a financial statement from LA Direct Models later in the video. The most important part of this trafficking story is that Shona River didn't have the correct paperwork to work in the US, in the porn industry or any other job. And most foreign girls that work in the US porn industry, they also don't have correct paperwork. Good agents will insist that they get a work permit before they can work in the porn industry. But many bad agents will allow them to work without documents. They might not think this is that bad, but what it does is it puts the girl under the complete and total control of the agent. She would always have threats of deportation hanging over her. And who can she report him to if something goes wrong or she has a complaint? Like she can't exactly go to the police when she's working there relief. Shona will also say that she was sent to LA Direct by Pierre Woodman. This is nothing new. I've covered this extensively in another video all about Pierre Woodman. There's a link to that in the comments. Woodman openly admits to sending girls to Derek. But since my previous video came out, he started to backtrack a bit and say that he was just introducing someone to a friend, that it wasn't sex trafficking, definitely not sex trafficking. But in my opinion, when you introduce a girl to someone that traffics them, you are part of the sex trafficking. You are involved in that deeply. We need to know a lot more about what exactly the relationship was between Derek and Woodman, and there needs to be an investigation to find out exactly what happened between them. Derek Kay has been indicted by a grand jury in California for pimping and pandering. So hopefully in time, we'll find out exactly what Woodman's involvement was in that, and if he broke any laws. Finally, I just want to say something about the porn industry, because it's not the porn industry that's trafficking these women, it's porn agents. But porn companies are allowing it to happen, and they're making huge money from it. Porn companies could stop the trafficking overnight. All they have to do is start checking the visa, the work permit of every model they shoot. It's not even any extra work. They already have to check two IDs for every performer and have a load of contracts to sign. Taking a photo of someone's work permit is not a big deal. I've been looking through porn sites and I saw trafficked women on almost every single porn site I visited, even the ones that advertise themselves as ethical productions. I would argue that everybody in the porn industry knows there are many girls working illegally and I would say that many directors actually prefer it because they want to work with girls that can't say no. You know, who are they going to complain to? And this has a horrible impact on the models that are working legitimately. So if you're an American model, you might be losing out on work. You might find that prices are lower because of the illegal workers coming in. And also there's more pressure on the American girls to do extreme activities because these other girls who can't say no, they're saying yes. So you could get labeled as difficult to work with because these other girls are saying yes to everything. But, you know, the American girls are saying no. I also want to say that it's not just European models that have been exploited this way. They're just the ones I know most about because of me living in Europe and being friends with many girls who have experienced this. There's also a huge number of Latin American models that go through exactly the same thing, maybe more, and also girls from other parts of the world. I hope that after seeing this interview, every porn company will start checking every work permit for every production they do. Let's see how many actually do that. We were talking about your experience working for LA Direct in America. Quite 
some time ago now, and I've already spoken about the problem of European women being trafficked to America, but I thought it'd be really good to get your experience with that because you lived through it. And I think hearing someone's personal story, it makes it more real for people because me saying, oh, this is how it works and how it happens. I think people don't connect with that as well as if it's like, this is what happened to me. I think it'd be just really interesting to hear your perspective on it, your feelings on what happened. Feels like a bad dream, but back then it was quite intense. Mm. Um, so I went to America in 2018, January, but I started my career one and a half before that. So you're still quite new, a year and a half in. Mm, kind of in porn. That's not very new, but sure. kind of new. Especially at that time, it was people didn't have very long careers at that point, did they? Because there's no OnlyFans or. Yeah, or it was already kind of no, no, no. There was OnlyFans, but the problem was I registered because I like to feel stable and have more things going on for me. But I never actually got the money because I couldn't link my Hungarian bank account oh, to it. Yeah, yeah. It was only something like USA, Canada, France, mm. maybe even Italy. Yeah, it was very Finland, new, some it? very random like, like it didn't eight even, or ten countries could link their bank account. It didn't even work properly, I think, at that point, and people weren't making like serious money on it yet. Like maybe one or two people were, but most people. Not yet. Yeah, so I give up very quickly mm. because I never see any money from it. Uh, yeah, back to the topic. So I started uh, doing porn about like one and a half before that. And I kind of liked my first year. I started shooting porn because I have a really high libido and I like to have sex. I like traveling. I wanted to try new things, mm -hmm. um, sexually and non-sexual thing, meet new people. Uh, but kind of after one year, I started to have bad experiences as well. So I had a, a fallout with my agency and I started really? sh uh, just doing webcam with a couple. I didn't know you fell out with your agency. What happened? Um, they started labeling me as somebody difficult mm. because for me, it was not enough just to receive a literally one sentence long message that shoot tomorrow, boy, girl, this much money. Yeah. yeah. And they would, they are unwilling to tell me which company is it, who would be the male or female performer. Uh, just nothing. Yeah, and often they, it wouldn't be a company <laughs> and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So they started labeling me as somebody difficult and they wouldn't give me good jobs. Also happened to me that I got an STD and as a responsible person, um, I informed my agent, Real Babes, mm -hmm. really quickly that uh, I got something and please inform my... Uh, my partners who I shoot with. And she said, no, they're fine. Yeah. So that was kind of fishy for me. Yeah. And also they forced me to have a really strong penicillin injection another time. I remember. Because uh, certain people had syphilis. They tested positive for syphilis. And it's not even one, first one and two and then four people. But they d wouldn't care to stop the shootings. They continue shoot shooting every day. And then eventually they, they realize like, oh, shit. Then you know what? We just saved the situation by forcing everybody to go and have a penicillin injection. And then we don't even need to quit shooting one day. So we can make more money like that. Yeah. And I remember how bad it was for my body. And after I had so much problems. Yeah, I remember it really messed up, like your immune system. And I remember you having a lot of problems and you like kept trying different diets to try and get things back to normal. Yeah. So, yeah, and then they would uh, send me for 
they called POV shoots. That mm-hmm. means a not good looking man with a video camera in a hotel room. Yeah, and it will never even go on the internet. And I would never have seen the video. Yeah, so escorting basically. Uh, discount escort, let's say. Discount, yeah. Plus, cheaper, isn't you are not it? Yeah. even uh, have sex with condom. Yeah. Because they have a test. Yeah. I mean, it's, so, it's wrong on so many levels. And there's no ID for the test. Um, the test at Interlab, which is where it was. Oh, literally, the good old days. Literally, you do the test yourself if you're a man. Um, so you could literally just spit on it, wipe it, smear it, on a, crazy. smear it on a slide and say, oh, that's my for test. For us women, it was a proper testing. Yeah, in the UK, when you get tested that old-fashioned way, some a professional takes the swab. But at this clinic, you did it yourself. So if you're a guy and you're thinking, well, if I get a positive test, I'll lose work. So the incentive is just fake it, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, That's like, of course. like, I mean, I, I never did that because I'm a germaphobe and I was always paranoid as hell, um, like freaking out over tests. And I always preferred people to have like a test the day before or like, you know, really close to the wire testing. Um, but I remember thinking at the time, like, this is so easy to cheat. Like, why? How? Who's enforcing this? Who's checking it's even the correct person walking in? Because you give ID the first time you come. After that, you just say your name. So, like, someone could come in and do a test for you if you couldn't be bothered. Oh, yeah, on Interlab, there was no photo. There was but... a first one you did. You, the, you gave your ID, but I never saw anyone checking anything. Maybe they do, but I never saw anything. So no, I never had to like give my ID to prove it's me. <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. And now it's improved so much. So even you can check the other person test with a simple QR code. That's quite great. Well, even at Interlab. No, but no, in talent no. yeah, testing. Yeah, talent testing. testing yeah. So it sounds like um, at that time you loved doing porn and wanted a porn career, but you were disillusioned with yeah, the work. Doesn't really felt safe safe and i wanted to manage my own brand and i don't want to shoot for dodgy companies and and not and not with professional people i don't want to uh have sex with a with an average looking or worse than average looking man in a hotel room with a camera mm. which is understandable so then I had a fallout and then I did, um, so you left the agency. Not officially, but I just kind of gave up. gave up. Yeah. I didn't go back after the penicillin injection because I, I didn't feel good. Cause I can't imagine you falling out with someone like having an argument or something just cause you're very. Yeah, very chill, but yeah, uh, yeah it managed. And then after a long break, I was kind of thinking about, but oh, I like shooting porn and it was fun. I like to go for the shoots, but I really, I, I, I don't really want to work with this agency before. And I started entertaining my idea to, to go to America, you know, mm-hmm. because in America, everything is possible, right? Yeah. And I think people like me, saying like, oh my God, the industry is so much better over there, probably <laughs> played into that, <laughs> which, you know, I still stand by that statement, but. You do? It is better, but it I still has a lot of problems. It's further, so you don't, you're not aware of all those things about that's true, going around. That's true. And even in Europe, the bit of the porn industry I worked in was mostly quite nice, but it's like an iceberg. There's so much below the surface mm-hmm. that you don't see unless you look for it. Um, I guess the same in America. Yeah, I can also only speak for myself mm. because I would say my experience were mostly good, but probably I am I'm the few person who haven't had really, really, really bad things happening. And that's because you said no to a lot of things. Yeah. Like when I get labeled that I am being difficult and yeah. picky. Yeah. Difficult and picky. For, for picking the companies and people I want to work with. 
Just for asking what you want to work. What's going to be on the internet till the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. Completely understandable. So what happened when you started thinking about America? So a little bit more than a year after I started, I was thinking I should go to America, but it's so far away. Usually the girls who would go to America, they go through my, through my Hungarian agency, but that was not an option because I stopped talking oh, to really? them. And then. Uh, my friend, Pierre Woodman, he told me his best friend is uh, Derek Hay, and he's amazing. He's the best Asian. He has the most stars, and he's going to treat you very well because you are my friend, and, and it's going to be amazing. Mm. But before, before I get in touch with him, I also contacted uh, ATM LA. Yeah, I that's think. who Brill Babes worked with, I think. That was Shy Love at the time, I think, right? Uh, I can't remember. I no, could be I wrong think Shy Love is a, is a different. Maybe. ATM layer is different. But anyways, they got back to me that if I'm not willing to shoot anal movies, then they don't want to represent me. Nice. At least they were honest, I guess. Yeah, at least it was <laughs> honest. So no hard feelings. It was really yeah. clear. No, no bullshit. <laughs> they, they just said no, because then probably they cannot get enough job for me. So then I ended up uh, contacting uh, LA Direct, Derek Hay. And it was very short communication. He said, yes, I would love to have you. And we set the date when I would come. And it was just as simple as that? Like there was no... Not too many discussion. And because he was the friend of my friend, I thought it's going to be all okay. Mm. Was there any discussion about paperwork, about applying for a visa, for a work permit? So they told me I would go, I need to apply for, for a simple ESTA. And there's a loophole in the system that if I go to America, I need to have two IDs to shoot. And one can be uh, anywhere else, from anywhere else in the world. And one must be from America. Mm -hmm. And they told me there is the loophole in the system is I need to go to Arizona and ask for a temporary American ID. Yeah, from the DMV. From, from the, the DMV, process. yes. Yeah. And with that and with my Hungarian passport, I could be shooting and the money would arrive to his bank account and after he would give it to me. Yeah, so the loophole and the loophole he was talking about, it was quite clear that this is not the way you're supposed to do it. We're tricking the system, basically. Yes. And did everybody know that? Like, did like Woodman know that? Did I, they... I didn't have anything else discussion with him. He just referred me to Derek. Mm. And from, from then, I just had the discussion with him. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not even sure he explained to me that he would get the money first and after he would send it to me. But for sure, he just told me about the American ID thing. Yeah. And I think for people that don't know, like that's, if you're filming porn in America, it's a legal requirement to have yeah, two forms of ID and one of them has to be American. There's no legal requirement for porn companies to check if the model is legally able to work in America. So, um, that means porn productors in America, they can hire illegal immigrants to work in porn and they can hire trafficking victims. So if a girl is, has been trafficked internationally, there's no legal requirement on them to check her welfare. They can do it if they want to, but there's no legal requirement to check, which is quite strange, isn't it, really? Because it seems like they've put nearly a protection in place, but they haven't quite, you know. It's like, yeah, it's like a frame rule. Hmm. It'd be so easy to just say, you have to check work permits, and that would protect a lot of um, trafficking victims and protect, protect producers, because if you're a producer and you have good values, you don't want to have a trafficking victim 
or someone controlled by someone else or anyone, anything illegal touching your business. So you should want to do that voluntarily, um, you'd think, at least. I mean, I, I didn't do it when I was working. But... Yeah, but my experience in America, people seem to be caring, first of all, because they always ask, hey, how are you? Mm -hmm. Big words, you know? Um, I think people are very... Huh? I think people are quite caring and outgoing now. And I think it's mostly fake. It's just sure. networking. And secondly, uh, American companies seem to be caring way more about the models, but it's also, they just, it's just pretending, actually. They what? don't really care. The only reason they, they, they seem they care because you can sue them. In Europe, nobody is suing the way Americans sue each other. Yeah, you can't. So they just like seem to be more caring because they don't want to be sued, but that's it. Yeah, I think that's, we'll definitely have to go into that more because I think it's true. I think it's a good thing as well. So I guess let's go back to the timeline. So was there anything else that happened before you went out? Like, it were was you... very, very, very short conversations. Hmm. And then we just discussed I need to apply for ESTA and that the best time I would arrive to America is for the 2018 AVN award yeah. and then spent maximum three months there. Yeah. So at the AVN awards, it was basically that you would be there to meet producers, drum up business, meet fans, like let people know who you are. And then after yeah. the award, well, you I have lots so. of bookings. Yeah. Which makes complete sense. Um, did you have to prepare anything before you left? Were you told, like, um, like what were you told before the trip, like, to bring with you or anything like that? Not at all. Just, it was just... I was really, um, very short conversation, not, not, things were not really explained to me. Mm -hmm. I just, the exact same impression. Just if I ask too many questions, it's a hustle for them and annoying. Mm. Oh, so it was a similar thing to like with your European agent, like that they don't like to answer questions. Um, yeah, and then I had a, a trust in him because he was a friend of a friend. So mm. I didn't insist on having a billion questions. Yeah. Just the necessary ones. That makes sense. And... The thing Derek's in trouble for is for pimping and pandering, and he's been indicted for that. So I think, I don't know the American legal system too well, but I think that means that he has to stand trial for those crimes now. And that's in connection to him having a porn agent, a porn model agency, which is legal. But then the charge is that he also had um, an escort agency connected to it where um, you could book the models for escort services. Did you know about that before you went to America? No. No. So I guess before we get into that, like once you arrived in America, like how did it go? I guess you flew into Vegas? Yes, that was a not smooth landing. First of all, I had, I was super sick and I had the temperature. Mm. And secondly, they took me to the immigration office and investigated me for three hours really so they knew something was off i guess yeah i fit the profile i was a pretty young eastern european girl traveling alone and i prepared uh, i was doing a fake booking for tickets i collected uh, what i want to see um, so I had a story, were what you, I going to say. Were you told to do that? No. That was just an instinct. So you Yeah, but I heard some girls had the difficulty entering. Yeah, when they find out but girls are there But it's not work, like so, yeah. LA Direct was so amazing that they, they would prepare me to, to do it. Yeah, it was more chat from within the industry. Because a lot of girls, they get kicked out or they get Yeah, so I was also super nervous entering the the border and then he made me put his address and his name into my ESTA mm. and the first question at the border was okay Derek hey 
okay, former name, Ben English, porn actor, uh, owner of erotic agency. And I thought I gonna just like, please, <laughs> please. I just wanted to sink in the, in the floor. Mm. I just was the most uncomfortable three hours of my life, really. And they were questioning me that what kind of sexual services I'm going to offer to Mr. Hay. And I was keep saying, no, I'm not going to offer any sexual services to Mr. Hay. Mm. And then they were asking the same question for three hours. So they thought he and... booked you rather than that you were coming there to work for him. Yeah. Yeah. And then they wanted to open all my luggages. But then they lost my luggages. It never arrived to America. But then they took my phone. Oh, they looked through everything. Yes. And then they figured out I did escorting in Europe. So then after they were more sure that uh, Derek is going to be my next client. Hmm. I guess, I wonder why they let you through. Because I guess it would have been better for you if they denied you entry in the end. But I never going to know. Yeah. And then they were just keep insisting the same question over and over again. And finally, I just told them that I am actually thinking to be an adult actress and I'm here to visit AVN. Yeah. So you see, you're allowed to do that. And they were like, oh, then this way. <laughs> you can't believe it. And they let me in, so I found it myself in America after going through the stress, being sick, and not having uh, another set of panty. Lovely. I was in. Yeah. And that was the beginning of quite a bad time. It was very intense. Because the ABMs bad. is intense, even if you're there having fun. It's super intense and I was the deepest I have ever been because you know me, like I am not likely to have depression you or bad mood for... me every day, I think, for hours every day. Um, I just felt so bad because there was nothing I could do to help. Yeah, and I didn't want to, to give up because when, I don't know when I would have the next time to, mm. the next chance to go to America. So... When did you first meet Derek? So he picked me up at the airport. And that was the first time. And he told me uh, the next day I need to do a photo shoot. And what was he like? Was he friendly? Did you speak about anything? No, he, he was not friendly. He is really cold and he, he doesn't speak much. And he always, he's always on his phone. Hmm. And the photo shoot was for... A portfolio for a portfolio, the yes. And so, I guess what happened during the week of the AVN? How was that? It was all right. It was fucking freezing. That was the first time me being in America, and I didn't uh, really? get used to setting like seventeen Celsius indoor. Oh, because I remember <laughs> like wearing an underwear in seventeen degrees. I was saying, what are you on about? Cold? Like Vegas is quite warm, even. Inside. Not inside. Not inside. Not inside. So that was a bit of a culture shock. I was signing autograph at the booth, taking picture with fans. And this is the I tried to get, booth, right? Yes. Try to get to know people, walk around, networking a little bit. Mm -hmm. And during Avian, because I haven't had my American ID, uh, he got me two jobs to be a hostess at an ABM party. Mm -hmm. I think it was for two days. So that was my first and second job. Okay. And was there anything else significant happened during the AVN week? Mm. I guess were you still optimistic at that point? Yeah, but I felt the first... So he was the same as my European agent, very cold, uh, not explaining too much. It's like, it's like you're doing it the way I say it or no. 
Like you cannot, you, you have the feeling that you cannot say no. Can you give me an example? And being super controlling. So um, he was hosting me in his house. That was the model house. But first of all, it's really strange for me. Like why I'm in the same house as my agent. First. And he was living in this fancy private area. What was guarded. So to enter his place, I need to go through two uh, security guards and two separate fans. So that was like a super surveillance. Like every time I had to have his permission to go to, go to home, right? And then every time I wanted to leave the house, they, they were calling him. And if he didn't pick up the phone, I couldn't just leave or come in. Yeah, and that's, and yeah, like you say, the other agents that I know of in America, they have a separate model house. You don't. You live. don't live with your agent, right? No. So that was the first very strange, um, really like discomfortable. What was he like to live with? Mm, he was always in his, uh, his office. He didn't talk much. He was on his phone, 024. Mm. He was working at home. So the other two agents were there as well. And the same week, they took me to Arizona to the DMV office to apply for the American ID. And who took you for that trip? Was it like he booked a driver or something? Or No, one of the agents. A new girl. I, I can't remember her name, but she just started mm. that time. And then, yeah, so you say like, oh, I need an ID for, so I don't want to carry my passport around and things like that, isn't it? I was so surprised. I asked, asked him what I need to do. And he said, they won't ask anything. Yeah. And this is what happened. They don't ask anything. Like it's the most natural thing that there is this foreigner person asking for an American ID. Yeah. Well, I don't know why it was always Kingman, Arizona. Um, but yeah, I drove someone there as well. Um, and it was was strange. But yeah, that's how everybody did it. Not everybody. Some people went through the proper channels and got working per work permits, the artist visa. Yeah, well, it takes quite a long time. Yeah, it's a lot of work and a bit of money. I think about five, six thousand dollars. Some agents insist on it. Some don't. Yeah. So my first action was to do the photo shoot and then go to Arizona. And after the AVN started, so the plan was it's usually, it takes about two weeks to get the ID back. And by then I would be able to shoot movies. Ah, oh, okay. And I was so unlucky. So for me, it came after three weeks. So it was delayed. And when I opened it in the cart, there was, uh, my picture was not there. And it was just written valid without picture. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's very strange. Very and very I strange. showed to Derek and he's like, no, this is not good. So then I had to go to Arizona again and reapply. Ah, uh, that's annoying. So you were just stuck there with no work, I guess, for a while. Uh, yeah, actually. So I had this two avian shoot and somehow I managed to shoot for, for blacked without having my ID because they already booked me and I did the shoot and I was I'm sure I haven't had my new ID mm. I guess maybe I guess they just did something wrong I mean it's Greg Lansky so he's not exactly known as someone that does things by the book is he <laughs> that's why he doesn't work there anymore <laughs> so it's not like he has a good reputation yeah and also uh I think after, it's really hard to exactly remember because mm -hmm. it was six years ago. Yeah. And yeah. And when my memory was fresh, I was hoping there is going to be sooner a trial against him. I think your wish came true. Some brave girls spoke out and worked with the FBI to nail him, really. Hopefully. I was, I was, one, yeah, I was uh, taking part in doing the documentary. Yeah. But without face. Yeah. That's smart. While I was there anyways. So you have spoken about this before, just not on camera before. Not on camera. It was very, 
very bad. Now it feels like a bad dream, but back then it was like very traumatizing. So take us through just um, how things developed. I guess AVN went well or not? Yeah, it was kind of fun. And uh, I'm not sure exactly when, but maybe at the first week I got there, he he told me, now it's time to sign a contract. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. And he gave me the contract, the exclusive model contract and he put five years in it what was so unusual because either it's one or two years and it in porn movie it's kind of like your whole career yeah so i tried to bargain with him and he said no it needs to be five years and i remember it was already like i had a really bad feeling about it mm. And what else was in the contract? Was there anything else that felt wrong or off? So he also wanted to take 15% from my money compared to the usual 10% what other agents charged. And why and was he explained that? to me because, oh, you are a foreigner, so we're going to drive you to the shoots and that's why it's extra 5%. And did they drive you to the shoots? Sometimes yes, sometimes <laughs> no. Wow. I think, um, I'm not sure what the California rules are, but I know in the UK and in France, there's limits on the percentage that an agent can take from a model. Um, I think in a lot of cases, it's restricted to 10% legally. So after this, I'll definitely look up California model regulations. I'm just curious if he was just taking advantage and because who are you going to tell, you know, you're there working illegally. So he can ask for more and you can't report it to anyone. Yeah, like, exactly. When I was speaking against him, like, how can I <laughs> say anything when I'm not even supposed to be there? Did, and you always had that, like, you knew you weren't supposed to be there. Like, yeah, you felt that was like a point of control that he had. Yeah, from, from day one, of course. Mm. Well, I had the, my, the confidence because it's through a friend. So yeah. it's going to... I was hoping it's gonna feel a bit strange and different, different atmosphere, but it's gonna uh, work out in the end. Mm. And then I talked to Pierre, like, hey, is it okay? Is it normal five years? And he told me, like, oh, don't worry, don't worry, it's okay. Oh, so he it's continued. my friend. He didn't like, yeah, he just supported. Because you'd think that, like, five years is a long time for anything. Like Especially in modeling, it's like, yeah, I turn into a MILF in five years in porn. Yeah, it was like that, wasn't it? I think it's less like that now, but yeah, at the time it was very strict, wasn't it? It's like teen as long as you can and then MILF. <laughs> and I was, uh, I was in America and you know what, like without him, I could not work. I didn't even have my ID. I already tried to get in touch with another reputable agency and they just told me straight away, if I don't do anal, they don't want to deal with me. Mm. So then I, I was there and I didn't uh, have any choice. So then I signed and give it back to him. And literally on the same day, he told me he have another proposal. What was that? He told me he would give me hundred dollar if I give him a hand job, two hundred dollar for a blow job and three hundred dollar for a sex. Wow. And, and you don't need to say anything right now, but think about it. And how did you feel at that point? Uh, horrible. Because on the same day I just signed this agreement for five years and I give him all the power over me. Mm. And after he tried this other so as soon as it was signed as soon as yeah. it was signed and you i think just for people watching in america i think contracts are more strict and it would mean that you wouldn't be able to work for any other agent like if you fell out um or if he didn't like you plus he's he a can, bully what i didn't know back he then can stop you working but even if i legally managed to break the contract nobody wanted to pick a fight with him mm. he had a lot of power didn't he and I guess just on this, just his sleazy behavior, just offering you money for sex. 
I don't know which one was worse, offering money for sex or offering such a little money. Mm. Because this is crazy, like even a street hawker would make more money than this. And this was in LA, I guess. Wow. That was back in Vegas. I was still in Vegas. I proposed this when we were both in his house on the stairs, casually just, oh, I have another business proposal. So me staying under his roof. And he has a lot of money, so he could pay. It's, it's a power pay. It's not yeah. about like he could not pay me a thousand or, or whatever I asked for. It's about the, it's a power game. Yeah, and it's almost and the control. like yeah, almost like wanting to humiliate you and show you who's boss, really. And then I went back to my room and I felt like the the ceiling is gonna fall on me. Like I just didn't know what to do, um, who to talk to. I didn't know anybody in America. I can just call my friends from Europe and cry, but I I I felt so horrible. And I don't know how to decline him, but then at the same time, get on well with him and just mm. have like a normal verb relationship. Because before I didn't have this experience in Europe, I was, I was proud that I am so honest. Yeah, like, a lot of girls do like have, my yeah. job is to have sex, but. I don't need to have sex with anybody to get the job. And for me, it was clear. And I felt su super bad this happening to me. Yeah, I think it's hard to comprehend how difficult a situation that must be in, how threatening as well. Because I say you're in the house with this guy. It's not like he's in a different building. You've got to live. I can't even leave the house and come yeah. back without his permission. He needs to give the permission that I can leave the gate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because every time I would go, they asked, like, where you are coming from? Mm -hmm. And then they would call him. So he would know every time, like, when I am leaving and when I'm coming back and what I'm doing. Mm. And it is an insane amount of control to have over someone when... And especially, it's... like, I was a 25-year-old and he was... I assume over 50. Mm -hmm. So he has so much experience and power and just so much inequality between us. Yeah. Plus, I, I just started doing porn and I was, as I mentioned, I was quite picky. I wanted to manage my career and only do the things I want to do. So I didn't make so much money with porn. It was a few thousand um, euro per month. Mm -hmm. And when I went to America, it was kind of a big investment for me. Just to buy a back and forth ticket, it was already over a thousand dollar. Plus, he was charging me every single day forty five dollar to stay in his own house. I mean, that's. I mean, at that time, I think an Airbnb would be, or like just having a roommate would be cheaper, wouldn't it? That's quite a lot of money for. Yeah, so I was in America and then every single day it was $45 plus, plus my food, plus my taxi, plus everything. And, you know, I couldn't work for such a long time. Mm -hmm. So then I am, I'm already there, like already spent like, I don't know. Uh, I just know it costs so much money, but they never, I didn't know exactly how much the things. After a month, I got my first balance and I almost fainted, like how much money they took from me for this bullshit uh, expenses. One of the complaints against Derek, one of the allegations is that he gets girls into debt in order to push them into escorting. Um, was it just an allegation? I um, think that came up in the documentary. Um, the NBC one. But yeah, just keep telling us like how things developed. Um, so AVN happened and the fact that I could still not work for a long time. And I never told you this, but I eventually did it, what he asked me to. Really? And I never told this to anybody because I just felt so ashamed and horrible. And I felt in the corner. 
So in the end, I actually said yes to his proposal. I'm sorry. And this, yeah. Oh. And I, and I did a hand job for him two times and he was telling me it's so even so good for me because I don't need to go anywhere. I can just walk from my room to his room. So good for you. So good for me. And I managed to raise 200 instead of 100 for a hand job. And this happened twice. And he is such a big asshole. He didn't even pay me for the second time. Really? And I felt so horrible at the, at the time. I didn't know what to do. I was alone in America, feeling I am pushed to the corner, signed this contract. I was hoping if I do it, then he would give me, then he would be nicer to me. Did he change towards you? No, he just got worse. So he got me one job uh, for blacked and one blacked row. And after he, he didn't get me any job or maybe one more, more for cum soda. Now was it just no more work? No more work. Why was that? So from Las Vegas, after a few weeks, uh, then I got super sick, so I stuck there for an extra week. And then I flew to um, LA to do my black shoot. And that one got postponed because I got the avian flu when everybody got sick. Yeah. There's a lot of germ swapping at the avians. Yeah. Especially porn stars, they're, you know, very closely. Yeah, I mean, I always stayed out of that stuff, but the amount of orgies I've been invited to, I'm like, no thanks, like, I'm here to work. <laughs> yeah. So then I, I went to LA, and then again, I was staying in Derek's house. That was also his house, but that so-called model's house, because he was based in Las Vegas, so he's just occasionally be there. But mm. then he was staying in the same house. And then the same thing happened. I was still paying um, $45 per day. While at the same time, I didn't have in, uh, any other job. Mm. This two black shoot, the avian hostess job, and the two hand job. And do you think companies were trying to book you? I think yes, because used to porn were uh, quality over quantity and they had a few really really big stars who would be really famous they would tour they go to conventions they would do feature dancing sign dvds but nowadays uh they want quantity so even if you if it's your first shoot for them and you are not even beautiful they would still book you because you are mm. fresh every they would already want new faces wouldn't they and yeah you should have been overwhelmed with work because there were so many companies at that time yeah so. and i never worked for them before and mm. i spoke english but not really so most of the european girls they don't really speak english so That's also true and did you ask him like why you're not getting work um he told me that my reputation uh, from europe catch me in america and the companies don't want to work with me because i am a horrible person and what was the point of saying that to you, do you think? I don't understand. I didn't understand and I was crying every day as to remember that why this person agreed that he would have me and represent me because when I was young, when I told somebody has an agent and manager, then you are a star and this person is working for you. Mm. But it's not like that. It's like... In porn, I met a lot of power-hungry people who really enjoy their little power. I was feeling like I am his, his little toy or pet. 
I remember um, I met one time when I was in America, I met up with Nellie Kent and Anissa Kate, uh, and they were staying at Derek's house. And I remember it got to about 6 p.m. and they both had to like run away and they looked scared. Like they had to get home to clean the house before he got back. And I remember- I didn't clean at least. At the time we were laughing about that. But it was very weird, you know, like, oh, we got to get back for Derek. No, it's super abusive. And so you said it got worse and worse. And how, how did it get worse? As I mentioned from day one, I felt this like super controlling thing. And I, he, he was just toying with me, like, why I was there. He, I thought we're going to make money together mm -hmm. because he only makes money if I make money, right? But he... It was not his best intention to get me any job while he put me in his house and charging me every day $45 to be there. And also, the worst thing, I didn't have a key to the house. So it was, the driver was staying there full time and a few other girls, like maybe three or four fix. And there was a, a black girl who I was sharing my room. So for $45, so $45 dollar, it's a shared room. And I could, they didn't have a coffee machine in the house. And I like to have a few coffee per day. And I was doing nothing. So I was just fucking around in the house all day. Mm. And if I leave, then I couldn't come back. What do you mean you couldn't come back? Because I had no key to the house. Because Derek told me he only gives key to the house to the people who sign a lease for minimum one year. So I was staying in the house without having a key. And do you think that was just, again, just to control you? Yeah. So there were a few girls who were permanently there. And also they... Maybe there was one girl who was happy, but the other ones, they didn't get a job like me. So they ended mm. up stripping because yeah. he didn't give them a job. Uh, but they had key because they, they signed the lease. And this black girl, uh, she also didn't have a key. And then we, we were just there and she was super enthusiastic. And she was telling me like, come on, you just have to show him you're a bad bitch. Come on, you have to show him you're like tough, that you survive everything, and then he is going to be proud of you. And I'm like, what the fuck yeah. is wrong with you? And I remember going to a party with her because I just had <laughs> every day free, like open my calendar, like I'm free on Monday, I'm free on Tuesday, I'm free on Thursday. So we went out to party. But we knew we, we can come back. So we left the inside garden door open. So then when we climbed the fence, then we can climb the fence and then come, come back to the house. And that's an insane situation for adults to be in. Like sneaking into a place you're paying for. Yeah, so we went to party, we came back. And we were all both wearing high heels. So then I had to take the trash can, push it to the fence. And she said, I'm a girl from the hood. I can do it. I was like, cool. So I was holding the trash can. She climbed the trash can and she jumped through the fence. And then she went in and opened the door for me. Wow. So this is how my everyday life was. And then I wake up, I would cry. And then probably I would go to the nail salon. So I order an Uber. And of course I open the door. I close. And then of course I couldn't even go out in the outside door because that was also locked. Uh, but after some time, I get used to it. I just need to climb and jump through the fence. I mean, and I remember after some time, it almost felt like normal. So I just jumped and started walking to the Uber. And the Uber got scared, like, oh my God, maybe yeah. it's a thief or something. And he, <laughs> he pressed the button, locked the door, and he drove away. 
and these are the conditions that his models, and I guess they are his models, are living in. It's um, and it's a really bad. Also like, petty. It's very petty. It's a mindfuck manipulation. I don't know what's the best word for it. It, it totally worked for the black girl. Because mm. she's like, I just need to try harder. Yeah, well, I, I feel I sorry for her. just need to get her. his I feel love. Sorry for her. It's um, like an abusive relationship, isn't it? Like I've said so many times, you can have an abusive relationship with your porn director and you can have an abusive relationship with your agents, it seems. Yeah, so it was, it was horrible. Mm. And the next step is, I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to give up. You mentioned the name Shy Love, mm -hmm. who was also friends with Derek. And then maybe back then, at that time, mm -hmm. they had a fallout. So she started her, fallout, I think. her own agency, but she was not better at all. She was uh, inviting checkers and put them to live in a trailer. I've heard that. For yeah. months. Yeah. And she only uh, get them really bad jobs like glory hall gangbang so stuff like they would and they'd be surprised most of them, by the they work. would they not wouldn't. wanna do it one of my friends went there and she said she was so depressed she just stayed at home for a month and um every time she went to a shoot they were like oh it's a gangbang she's like but i don't do that and then we'll go home and it was just i'm not saying it's nobody likes gangbang but most of the girls didn't want to do it. And this is the only thing she could just get them. And I remember one of my friends, she was telling me in this glory hall scene, it was nothing was explained. And somehow she just realized the director just also stand in the queue to get a blowjob. I think Shy Love had a very bad reputation and a lot of people wouldn't work with her or maybe they wouldn't work with her because of Derek. I know on the Mike South website, which is like a porn gossip site, there are horrendous attacks on her. Um, I don't know if the allegations against her are true or not, or if they're orchestrated, say, by Derek's fallout with her. Um, I have no idea. But yeah, I, I, I spoke to a friend um, about Derek's escort agency, and my friend was like, they all have one, you know, especially at that time. So everybody has like a, an agency or an agency they're friendly with that they get kickbacks from. Um, so I guess, and I guess that's like the next part of the story. Oh, I I got my first uh, balance sheet. Oh yeah. After one month. I've got that here as well. And what did? And it... I was in shock. So in the end, if I remember well, after doing that, four jobs. My balance was I w I earned five hundred dollar. So that's what two porn scenes. Two porn scenes and two, two hostess a job. Because they took money from you. Yeah, that was one of the allegations against him that he. That was the inc incredible charges for everything shocking. in order to get girls into debt, and so they don't make money with porn, and then or withholds work from them again to push them into so this 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 stuff was just wrong from every point of view so first of all he told me he would uh so because he takes 15 person he drives me around but then maybe the first or second uh, item on the list is taking to me to arizona for 350 dollar mm -hmm. And then he was just charging me for every single thing. Yeah. It really is insane. She was charging me for the 30 minutes photo shoot uh, to be on his website. And after he didn't even get me any job. Can I ask you about the AVN hosting suite party? Mm -hmm. What did you have to do at that job? I just had to be a topless hostess in oh, the party. Oh, okay, that was it. Yeah. No, the charges are absolutely crazy. And it's and seeing it written out that you're working, but you're not working for money. You're working just to pay his fees. It's and yeah. it's not easy work. And he was charging me for a flight mm -hmm. to go to LA when that was supposed to pay by the by company. The production, yeah. yeah. And I got sick 
And I, he saw how sick I was. And then he charged me another $200 to change the ticket. Yeah. And, and after he was guilt tripping me that, oh, if I were you, I would think twice if you would cancel this shoot because maybe they wouldn't rebook you. And I had a 39 Celsius temperature. Mm. And it's like a threat. So it, it was a mind fuck from all the time, every day. And then he just told me that nobody wants to shoot with me. And then he had this other agent, Fran, who start, who was pretending to be very nice to the girls. And then Fran he, was pretending to be nice. Yeah. She Have was you seen very her friendly. in the documentaries? She's like, her view of porn models is they're all whores. She even says it on camera. She's horrible. I said she was pretending to be nice. And she started whispering to my ear that, oh, you need to try to impress Derek more. And you know, it would be really good for your career to do anal movies. Mm, so I'm just trying to push you into things you yeah, don't want to so do. Yeah, so they told me it's totally fine if I don't do. But once I got there, then I got no jobs. Kind of backed me into the corner to give him hand job, what was like a total power play to him. Then just to then not to give me any jobs and then try to push me to do something again, what I don't want to do. Mm. Anal. Right now, I really like anal and it's nice, but it should be your own decision. Absolutely. And even if you enjoyed anal, it's okay to not want to do it on camera. Yeah, but so. to be on my own terms at the time when I want and with whoever I want. Yeah. So then I declined anal and then I was kind of <laughs> already almost in minus. I was definitely in minus because uh, I don't know how much money I was spending on my transportation, not to the shoot, but to any other transportation, to my nails, to tanning, to... Yeah, I remember they made you change your hair color as well. They said, like, you have to go blonde if you want to get Oh, yeah, because he said my, my hair looks too much a street style. Whatever that means. I don't think even Derek knows what he means when he says that. Yeah, but that was the like the least amount of, of, of bad, the changing the hair color. But like forcing me to, to do so many things and then after no job. So then I didn't have any job and I tried to do two things. One was to then, okay. He going to take 15% from me if I do a shoot. And he's the one who should get me the shoot, but he's not. But I have all this time, so I try to get to arrange the shoot for myself. But it was supposed to be his job because I thought this is what a manager would do for me, right? Mm -hmm. To represent me. <laughs> so then I get in touch with the, pe with the people who I met at the AVM party. And James Dean was super nice. He sent me a lot of contacts mm -hmm. and then I sent a lot of uh, email to, to companies, um, try to get in touch with them. And a lot of them got back to me and they were super nice. And most of them said, you are so nice. You are lovely. We would love to shoot with you, but we never ever work with LA Direct. And please get in touch with us when you are not with him anymore. Wow. So, I mean, I knew he had a bad reputation because I had friends that left his agency, but no one ever spoke about why at that time. I didn't know why. I was in shock and he just told me a few days before that how horrible I am. Nobody wants to shoot me mm. because I am a bad person. And then most people who got back to me, they told me they would love to. And in the end, I managed to find a few companies who said like, oh, yes. Uh, we would like to book you and we get in touch through LA Direct. Okay. And did those So I managed to yeah. uh, get a few shootings for myself. And of course, he was taking 15% from those ones as well. Mm. But still, total in three months, I did five porn shoots, five or six. And who were the other companies? Do you remember? One was a Japanese company who I know them from Budapest. Uh, Lazy Momo is on. Probably. Uh, Nubile. Mm -hmm. I think they had two shooting with me, two or three. 
Uh, what else? Or was it browsers, I think? Maybe. No, I no. didn't have Sherry Pimps. Sherry Pimps. And that's it. And I shot a few content. Oh, he even wanted to control me. He told me I am not allowed to shoot content with anybody. And for people that don't understand, content trade is when you um, have sex with another performer and you film it and you both keep it so you can both sell it yourselves. And why didn't he want you to do content trade? It's also um, control again. a form of control. So I shot a movie with James Dean and I guess we uh, post a picture on social media and then he got super angry with me. He shouted with me. And after he deducted from the next sheet, approximately like $200 again as an agent fee. He took an agent fee from, yeah. from your... So he even took more than 15% compared to what I would get for a boy-girl movie. So he basically just took, he fined you $200 for doing content trade. Yeah, or 250 something like that. For a scene, what I didn't even made any money with because I didn't have uh, OnlyFans up and running. I just thought in the, I'm just gonna uh, make the most of the time, network and shoot some movie and I figure out the way how to make. But even out. still, there's nothing in your contract that says you can't do OnlyFans or make independent content That was a small print what he just like told me. Oh, really? Yeah, casually he just told me, oh, by the way, yeah, after signing the contract, of course. Uh, I don't want you to shoot content. Amazing. So as I mentioned, I, I didn't have any job and I already did um, escorting in Europe. So I asked him if he, he have any contact to do escorting. Oh, you asked him for it? Yeah. And then he told me, oh, my friend Karen and David, they are, they are good. And I link you up with them. Hmm. So I started, I met them while I was at uh, his home, the model house in, oh, they came in over. Um, Hollywood. Not Hollywood, what's the city? Valley. Oh, um, oh, what's it called? Something Valley. And did you know it was his agency, allegedly? Uh, yeah, people were whispering that's his agency. But of course, when I met Karen and David, they didn't say like, oh yeah, it's, they said it's their agency. Yeah. But you didn't know from him. It was just, that's the one he introduced you to. Yeah. He's very good at keeping it away from him, isn't he? It seems. And how did it go working there? I guess better, maybe? In the beginning, it was okay. And they give me, they didn't give me a lot of job, but I just get super lucky because the first person they introduced me started really liking me and booked me every week mm. but apart from that maybe they give me one job and just to put it in perspective um for people who don't know like in porn a model agency they charge a producer a hundred dollar booking fee um they're taking 10 percent of the model's money so they're not making much money at all with escorting the fees were a lot higher, like a typical porn shoot is like $1,000. Whereas a typical escort job is, I don't know how much, what were your fees there? For one hour, I got $1,200 and I had to give them 300 back. It's better for Derek for you to do escorting than it is for you to do porn. Assuming that the charges but you against know the, him what's are the best? real. Giving you a handjob for $100 for him. Well, that's best, best for him. Deal. Yeah. It's a good deal. And how was it working for the agency? They pretend to be very nice, especially Dave. But they were all super controlling and they were saying, you cannot, you are exclusive to us. If we figure out you work without us, we never talk to you again and there's going to be bad consequences and you could not organize your own jobs. Bad if... consequences? Was that like a threat or? I just a casual. And so working for them, it was similar to working for Derek? 
they didn't give me so many jobs. That guy was just basically keep meeting me and they give me one other job or two. And I remember every time I was super nervous when I had to leave the house because I probably cannot get back. And also it makes the other people hate me because every time I need to call them like, please, can you open the door for me multiple times a day, every fucking day. Mm. And I went out to a late night out call and I finished around midnight and I was calling all the numbers, all the girls who are in the house and nobody picked up the phone. And I, I was in Beverly Hills and I almost started crying. I just went out to do a job and I have nowhere to live so I can spend all the money I made to stay in this five-star Beverly, uh, Beverly Hills hotel. Wow. And did Derek have any problem with you escorting? No, he never mentioned. He didn't try to control that or stop you getting jobs and things? I think he did because suddenly Derek, uh, Dave and Karen said, I am horrible and they never want to work with me again. Really? Suddenly they also thought I am a horrible person. What triggered that? I don't know. Just, it's very strange. But yeah, I think the thing that comes across most is just the controlling behavior, making you feel miserable, almost just getting off on the control, I guess, maybe getting off is the wrong word, I don't know, but certainly enjoying the control, especially, you know, when you've brought someone, when you've taken that risk of bringing someone to work illegally in the sex business, which is called sex trafficking, like, that's just the definition of sex trafficking. I don't understand why he didn't try and make as much money as he could from it. Uh, I, I also didn't understand. Yeah, it's very complex. And he's like, he was like, it felt like he's punishing me because I did something really bad towards him. And what was your overall feeling? Like, I mean, did you call Woodman about this as well? Like, did he try and do anything? I told him that it's really m miserable and he's not treating me well. And he just only said, oh, I'm so sorry this happens to you. I know he's not nice to everybody, but I told because you are my friend, I told him you are my friend, that he will be nice to you. But mm. this is all he said, nothing changed. See, I wonder what Woodman gets from sending girls to him. Because I don't know if you saw the allegation, but in... In some of the court documents, it says that Derek would send models to Woodman as a punishment for not doing what they were told. So I wonder what Woodman gets from the relationship. Because he could have sent you to any agent, right? He could have said, oh, go to Mark Spiegler. He's got the best reputation, the best I, I went on my Get own a work permit. to meet him and he said, I am very nice and he would love to represent me, but Till I am with Derek, he is not, not going to war against mm -hmm. Derek. And yeah, and Spiegler would have only taken you on if you had a work visa. Um, he wouldn't have allowed you to work illegally. Um, yeah, so it's just... Yeah, I didn't understand. And it was so horrible. I, I find another way. To, to survive and I moved out of the bonded house. I moved in with a, with a nice girl who was at the same agency and we are still friends still mm. today. Uh, but it was still miserable. And then I started hanging out with a black performer and we just had fun and sometimes we record it and he he find out and he started uh, threatening him that he never, this guy, never mm. gonna work with any of his model. And then he was shouting at me and he said a lot of racist things. Really? What? About the, the, your friend? Wow. So he was even controlling my private life. But this whole agency is toxic. I remember when I moved out of that model house, 
to, to my friend's house. A day later, the driver who lives inside the house asked me, sorry, have you seen my small white cooking pan? I'm just wondering because it's disappeared the same day as you moved out. Again, just so petty. It's so petty and... Like, I'm sure you're not going to steal a small white You know, I pan. don't cook, right? Yeah. So that's first. But why would I steal somebody's cooking pan? So stupid. So then the next time I had to go to a shoot, what I got for myself, they told me that I should wait for this guy, the driver, to drive me to the, to the testing station. And because I was so broke, I was like, okay, I just like all day... I was waiting for him because he's coming from Las Vegas or something. So I was waiting, 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 waiting. He told me he arrived at my house and I said, okay, coming. I went upstairs to get my ID, went down and in two minutes he left and told the agency that I was not at home. So then... Nobody believed me and I had to pay from my own money on top of they take 50%, 15% mm -hmm. from my money and I had to pay for my own drive to go to the testing station. Yeah, totally insane. And it just seems like just all of them. Every are... single person was so toxic in that whole yeah, agency. Yeah, it seems like that whole but team. Starting from a driver. Like... It sounds like the whole team were in on everything and obviously had their mission. Like with Girls Do Porn, that sex trafficking case, they were all in on it. Like everybody had their role in order to get them women to do porn. In Derek's case, I don't fully understand the story. I'm just seeing this one small part of it. But the controlling behaviors of all the people involved, from the driver, his other agents that work for him, um, even, you know, like other models in the house who are kind of encouraging you. Like you have to wonder, like, oh, does she work for him as well? You know, you just start getting like um, conspiratorial, I think. And yeah, I ended up uh, had to do stripping in Inglewood. Hmm. So that was how you got by while you were there. And the thing I just want to say personally is, I think, and why I think this is like an important interview to do is because it shows people what the porn industry is really like and there are so many European girls who have been sent to America and had a similar experience to you maybe some worse some better and none of them will talk because they're worried about losing their visa not being able to work there again and yeah also for me it took actually it's taken six years yeah to have the confidence to speak and it's the same situation for Russian and Ukrainian girls who are coming to work in Europe where they're not, where they're coming illegally. And this position that you're in where you can't go to anyone, you're all alone. None of us have empathy for how these Russian girls feel and the situation they're in and why they, we always think, oh, you know, the Russian girls, they're doing more hardcore things, they're doing anal, they're cheaper, but it's because they can't say no and they have no one to report it to when they do. Um, and I always feel guilty for the double standard I had. I always, like, when we spoke, I always would say to you, like, no, go to Spiegler, do it properly, take the time to get a work visa because um, you'll be under their control. Yeah, but, but also Spiegler is not a good option because I didn't want to do anal. True, And the true. famous is Spiegler girls do it all. Yeah, from he only king, people You would be it. like hanging upside down from the ceiling, BDSM, yeah. deep throat, like... You're right, you're right. Um, but it's just difficult. So just the situation that people get put in is so difficult. And in Europe, including me as a producer, Every producer should be checking work permit. Like in fashion modeling, they check work permits for the Russian girls that come over because they do have some values. They're not going to, you know, Gucci aren't going to want to be associated with benefiting from trafficking. In Europe, nobody checks visas and roughly half of the models are Russian and Ukrainian. Um, 
everybody's making money on the back of girls who are under the control of pimps, under control of agents, and under the control of... Um, but if after seeing this, if people don't start checking visas, then I think it's because they want it that way. You know, they want the girl that they can control. They want a girl that can't say no. But it's so disturbing, and I just hope that we can find a way to stop it um, in America and in Europe, because it's the same. The only difference is it's just a hierarchy, isn't it? Like the Americans exploit the European girls, and the European productions exploit the Russian girls. Um, it's so disgusting. Yeah, but in the end, I still, I am happy I went to America. It had some horrible part, but at the same time, I met some really cool people. I made some friends from the uh, gay industry who I was hanging out with. Uh, I am very happy I had the chance to try stripping. All mm -hmm. my respect to the girls. It's super hard job. Yeah. Uh, so it's a bit bittersweet. It was horrible, but at the same time, it was such a valuable life experience. And I feel so much stronger to live through and get out of it. And, and then just, yeah. I think that was the maybe tipping point where you kind of decided, okay, I'm going to be, do companion escort work be independent and this is what I enjoy rather yeah. than it's really good and also I like to shoot my own content mm -hmm. what is like 100% ethical porn I enjoy everything what I do when I do with whoever I want to do on my own terms so I'm I'm still shooting mm -hmm. but but it's it's so much nicer yeah I I really like support girls being in control of their career. Yeah, and this is something like more like a little bit more educational because what you can find porn on the internet, it's more like for entertainment, but it's not really like a how to guide. Mm -hmm. And I really started enjoying to do more sensual stuff, what's more educational, and this is where what I would like to do in in the future. Mm -hmm. And I just one final thing, because I just want to just check we covered it properly, is obviously it's taken, say, six years before you spoke about this publicly. It was really hard. And when I was like starting getting to that sensitive point, I was like, should I say, should I not say, should I say, should I not say? Yeah, it was really difficult. And were you afraid of speaking because of, I guess, like the the inner emotions or was it more like the fear of consequences before mm, it's a lot of things it's i don't know if it's gonna block me to ever go to america and i also feel i f i feel so bad that somebody taking advantage of me and put me in such a vulnerable situation you know this is something that you usually don't put on social media or, or, or share when they are in a, in a deep point. And I feel bad for this happened to me. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is it's still happening to girls now. Like there's still, I know for a fact, there's still people going over, less people, more people are doing it the legal way, which is encouraging. But I believe some people are still going over um, and having the same experience you did. So hopefully, it shouldn't be too easy to stop that. All we need is just for people to check work permits. Yeah, and we need more people to speak up. Yeah, good luck. So, <laughs> so yeah. Not many people will. <laughs> good luck with that. But if I did it, then maybe hopefully other people will. Yeah, you definitely inspired um, like Ophelia who came on my podcast after your one. And you encourage a lot of people to speak up and provide information privately um, on Rocco particularly so it does make a difference and I do collect a lot of information and a lot of help from people from people who are afraid of the consequences of speaking up um, and I admire those as much as I admire 
people that do speak up publicly. Because I get that porn is so interconnected that I can't, I can't speak about it without identifying people. So, but porn's so interconnected that for some people, they would lose everything if they said something. They would lose everything. So, but yeah, but I really appreciate you doing it. I know we're friends, um, but I think maybe that's maybe a privileged position for me. Um, so I'm lucky that you tr even though we're friends, I'm lucky that you trust me to tell the story. And you know what? I tried to tell my story before even I left America, but unfortunately they didn't put me in the documentary. Mm. So I already tried to. They focus on American girls, didn't they? Maybe. I didn't know they were said like they would like to interview me, but. I think also the crime of sex trafficking is more serious than the charges that he's already got are because of the international element. So maybe they just weren't confident with only one witness because they had five witnesses for the other allegations. And one was uh, living in the house with me. Mm -hmm. So I know how much she was suffering as well. She also, she was living in the house, charging so much money for it. And at the same time, he didn't give her any job and she also ended up stripping. Mm -hmm. I probably know what you mean, actually. Yeah, so thanks so much. I think it's incredibly brave. And I just hope we make a difference. Sometimes when these podcasts come out, Me too. it feels it was... like no one says anything or hears anything. But yeah. we know everybody in the industry is watching. And I hope it makes them think. And I hope it makes them question their own values. Because there are certain people who are being cowards. And there are certain people who are being willfully evil like they're part of it and they really need to look at themselves and like change because like they can change now or they can change when it catches up to them um because it will ca i will catch up to people um, yeah more thanks and for... more producers are going to prison so. thanks for <laughs> providing me this platform to speak because although it's not on my head in the everyday life and it was kind of back but I always know it's like low-key in the back of my head that this happened to me and I never actually told this to anyone. How does it feel to have shared the story? It's very liberating. Really? And I'm wondering how much shit I'm gonna get from certain people for friends. speaking up. <laughs> from yeah. friends. Friends. friends yeah yeah well um it'll probably be directed mostly at me so i'm kind of a magnet for hate these days so we'll see how that goes but yeah <laughs>